What's being called an attempted coup in the African nation of Sudan. Residents of the country's capital say today has been the heaviest day of shelling since the outbreak of violence began last week. And the United Nations says at least 180 people were killed there over the weekend. As CNN's Nima al Bagger reports for us now, even hospitals have come under fire. Sudan's military with a show of strength over the capital, Khartoum. <laughs> as birdsong and artillery fire echo. This country, roiled in recent years by conflict and coups, is once again the plaything of strongmen and what the military is calling an attempted coup. Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, Sudan's military's leader, is fighting for dominance with Mohammed Hamdan Degelu, known as Hemeti, who leads the paramilitary rapid support forces, which gained notoriety in the western Darfur region. And it is the most vulnerable who are paying the price. Two doctors' organizations say that in Khartoum, both sides have hit hospitals in the fighting, at least half a dozen, though both sides deny it. CNN obtained eyewitness accounts from doctors on the ground who told CNN that the paramilitary rapid support force directly targeted a hospital where wounded armed forces soldiers and their families were being treated including one doctor who says she witnessed the RSF approach Al Ma'alim Hospital in central Khartoum. I have to be strong enough to speak to you. You're the one that's going to tell the world what's happening to us. The evacuation was chaos. We were running, as soldiers were shouting, run, and then someone else would yell, stop, it's not safe. But what choice did we have? Three separate doctors there described to us coming under intense bombardment. The country's Central Committee of Doctors tells CNN that with no doctors to tend them, the dead and injured are left to rot in their beds. And the Sudan Doctors Trade Union called the targeting of hospitals and the housing of military personnel there a clear breach of international humanitarian law, a charge both sides deny. Both military leaders now fighting for control were key allies in subverting the country's nascent democracy after the popular uprising in 2019, which deposed Sudan's longtime dictator, Omar al-Bashir, who now languishes in prison. The memories of those protests and the symbolic photo that became its emblem are slowly fading, as has the promised transition from military to democratic civilian rule. Hello, assalamu alaikum, Saad al-Rais. But in an interview with CNN from inside Army HQ, the leader of Sudan's military tells me that the RSF militia is staging an attempted coup. I asked him why the Sudanese people should trust him, given his previous partnership with Commander Degen. General Burhan also committed to a return to civilian rule. The leader of the Rapid Support Forces also told CNN this weekend that he wanted to ensure democratic rule. I don't want to be the leader of the army. There's a framework agreement between all the Sudanese stakeholders that should be adhered to. I don't want to lead anything. Neither general could tell us when the people of Sudan could expect this deadly fight to end, while many languish without water, food, electricity, and no way to bury their dead. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has repeated his calls for calm, uh, joining other world leaders, but neither he nor those standing alongside him in these calls appear to have any way to deliver on them currently, and there really is no end in sight at the moment, Jake. All right, Nimal Bagger, thank you so much for that report, as always.